Welcome everyone! In this video, we are in the Color Cup, showcasing some more fun battles featuring... Chargebug! The Core Breaker Extraordinaire! Holy smokes, guys. I wanted to bring out a team and start this thing off with a very strong team that can handle the ever-so-powerful Toxapex Trevenant Core. And we landed on Chargebug. We will be leading with Chargebug as it has solid play on just about everything in the lead and also on this team. Speaking of Toxapex, we are running it on the safe swap with this uh, sort of anti-meta counter team. Toxapex, very solid and reliable uh, at any position, particularly on the lead or even as a safe swap, because if something can perform well on the lead, it'll perform well on the safe swap. So we're rolling with it there. And as we can see here, Shadow, Kanto Ninetales running Ember, the legacy move. It's well worth it on the Shadow, in my humble opinion. That shadow damage with the intense fast move pressure really allows Kanto Ninetales to farm things down and have loaded energy to absolutely dominate the color cup. And before we dive into the featured set of the video, we are kicking things off with some bonus battles that I had a lot of fun with. Here we go, Empoleon lead. Technically a positive lead for us. However, this waterfall damage with stab from an Empoleon is no joke, my friends. So we have to tread lightly here. We do grab a shield on the first discharge and we will return the shield in kind. Although we can tank one of any move, this waterfall damage is quite a bit. They aggro swap after we shield into a dugong. So very interesting. We are going to align our fire type um, Shadow Canto Ninetales here onto this Dugong. That is a mouthful, holy smokes. Shadow Canto Ninetales. And we will shield up the Water Pulse, to be honest. I had no idea what the damage was. I'm sure we tank it, but kind of want to preserve some health because this Canto Ninetales can fight back against that Empoleon. We can do neutral damage to it. We do get rid of the Dugong and they, they don't come in with the Empoleon. That's a wise decision by them because we were absolutely loaded. And we are running Psy Shock on our Ninetales. You don't need overheat in this meta, especially on this particular team. We, uh, it's nice to be able to do some nice neutral damage in situations where you are at a type disadvantage. And they take us out, they farm us down. Gonna throw Toxapex in here to soak this damage. Not too many places for our Toxapex to go, unfortunately. They aggro swap back into that Empoleon and we are gonna try and grab that final shield with a discharge. I don't think we will quite make it to another discharge as our opponent does not want uh, this charger bug to take out that Empoleon. So as predicted, they do take us out with a neutral drill pack. And now it is all up to Toxapex to perhaps make, pull off a miracle and make something happen here. Everything is resisted. Empoleon is absolutely terrorizing our existence. That is double resisted. The sludge wave does not KO. But we are super tanky and we definitely live a drill peck, even from a Pokemon that hits as hard as Empoleon. So now we have to farm this thing down. We farm down and we are just a few poison jabs off from the sludge wave. The question is, does this KO? Alomomola is super tanky. It doesn't quite KO, but one poison jab does the trick. Holy smokes. That one got a little sweaty and a lot of these battles were super sweaty. Unnecessarily so in my humble opinion, but good game well played. Oh, Charger Bug was absolutely loving these Toxapex leads. And speaking of, looky, looky what we have here, my friends, a Toxapex lead. This is why we are running this team right now in this meta. Charger Bug does quite well against a Toxapex lead. You will have to shield a Sludge Wave or catch it on your own Toxapex. Uh, you can play that a number of ways. And this uh, battle is pretty early on, so we do shield. And they make a play in the Trevenant. And here we go. This is why we have Shadow Kanto Ninetales in the back. This is looking like team number one from my top five best teams for the Color Cup thus far. 
And uh, in case you've been under a rock and you were unfamiliar, team number one features Toxapex on the lead with Trevenant on the safe swap and Tropius in the back. Now, they, uh, since the color cup has dropped, there have been a number of variations on team number one. I'm a bit partial to my uh, uh, or original version with Tropius as it beats the other variations of team number one. But you could see a Shift Tree, you could see a Gorgeist, you could also see a Bomba Snow. You can see I, any one of those uh, variations of team number one. But the beauty of this team is it beats them all pretty easily. So we were just playing out. And that's another reason why Psyshock comes in super clutch up against those bulky Toxapexes. And there it is, right on cue. It's a Tropius. Shouts to them for tuning into the channel. Rocking team number one. I don't blame them. It's a powerful team. Arguably the best team you could possibly run. But I always say time and time again on this channel, if you create a team, you build a team, you know how to beat it, especially if you've built a team specifically to hard counter it. It is a thing of beauty. Gonna go for the sludge wave. And we say bye bye to the tanky flying banana tree. And now all they have left is their own Toxapex. This is looking like nighty night, sleep tight. Not even gonna bother going to the sludge wave. This will not KO, but they need to farm us down and have energy for that charge of bug. And it is not happening for them, unfortunately. Again, shouts to them for tuning into the channel. But uh, yeah, we built this team to dominate that one. Good game, well played. I'm telling you guys, I was racking my brain. I said, I know there's a core breaker out there to break up Toxapex and Trev, and I think we landed on it. But here we go, uh, Talonflame lead. Very tricky lead to have to deal with here. Um, not sure what they could be running in the back. We are both doing super effective damage to each other and we do outpace. But once Talonflame starts revving up that uh, fast move pressure from these flame charges, it gets a bit dicey here. So I think what we're gonna look to do is go for this uh, next discharge here, likely grab the shield or one shot them. They shield. And we tried to catch the next uh, flame charge, but it was not going to happen. They were looking to over farm. They are boosted, but we are tanky and we tank even a boosted Brave Bird from a Talon Flame. Let's go. And they've got a Lantern in the back, so not looking too great for us. Lantern, you don't see too often, but when you do, it is a major problem for a lot of teams just because you you never you never anticipate someone running a lantern in such a grass heavy meta. So they're going to go for a surf, not going to allow us to get to another move, and our our poor charger bug is quite low at this point. It is um very difficult to have to shield this, but we got to get rid of this lantern. Our um Canto Ninetales can do nothing. So they are energy dry. They are really trying to get rid of this uh, low health charger bug. That's fine. Gonna let them do that. And they will outpace us to a surf, unfortunately. This is why Lantern can be such a problem on the right team. Uh, but you don't generally see it again because there are so many powerful grass types in this meta. Gonna try and go for the full aggressive farm down. We do get that. We've got loaded energy. They come back in with that Talon Flame. Gonna look to get rid of it with a Weather Ball here. Hoping that this just about KOs. It does not. That is unfortunate. And they snipe us with an Electrode. Oh, couldn't quite get that one done. Good game. Well played. Oh, this anti-meta team in the color cup was so satisfying. And here we go. We are picking up a Shadow Alolan Marowak. Going to make a play into our Toxapex here. They're staying in a little bit. Likely looking to catch a move onto a Jellicent. Okay, so very interesting to see. We saw the Alolan Marowak lead. We see a Jellicent safe swap. So I'm thinking this is team number five from my top five best color cup teams. And again, in case you've been under a rock and you're unfamiliar with my top five best color cup teams, team number five features Alolan Marowak on the lead. Uh, Trevenant on the safe swap and Jellicent in the back to close a triple ghost team for the color cup. And that's what this is looking like here. So we are playing with that in mind, making a hard team read here. And they do take us out with a Shadow Ball because we didn't throw our move because we wanted to get a nice healthy farm down. Because we are running Crunch on our Charger Bug and I highly recommend you run that 
in this meta, especially on this particular team, it really helps out with uh, doing neutral damage in situations where you are at a type disadvantage. Um, and also helps with these ghost types here. We're going for that crunch and they wisely shield. I was not expecting that. That's okay. I'm going to let whatever this go is go and put the hope and faith into our Shadow Canto Nine Tails to perhaps bring this home here for us up a shield. This is just another Bone Club. Going to let it go. Doesn't matter. Going to let them dump all of their energy on that low health charger bug. And now it is up to our... Uh, uh, did I say Alolan once? If I say Alolan, forgive me. I'm so used to saying that. Our Canto Nine Tails here. They're going straight Bone Club on us. And again, this is where having Psy Shock for the coverage comes in super clutch. You don't need overheat. I know it's so satisfying one-shotting steel types with overheat, but you don't need it. Sometimes you have to be a little bit practical, guys, and uh, they're just trying like heck. So by now, I'm reading, fully reading that there is a Trevenant in the back. I'm gonna go for this Weather Ball. It is neutral, but we are Shadow, and it does KO and bring it out. There it is. It is team number five confirmed. And because we were ahead by one ember, we will outpace to this weather ball. We get to this weather ball and we are saying bye bye to the Trevenant. And just like that, our Shadow Canto Ninetales has closed the game for us. You'll love to see it. Good game. Well played. Had a blast with those bonus battles. And we now move into the featured set of the video. And looky, looky what we have here. Yet again, another Toxapex lead. You absolutely love to see it if you run this team. So again, I started catching on and started catching the move on do my own Toxapex as the uh, sets started to wind down a bit. Uh, but here we do uh, end up shielding. So again, you can play it either way. You can either shield the first move or catch it on your own. And there it is, the Trevenant safe swap. And now it is time to unleash our Canto Ninetales onto this Trevenant. The way you play a Trevenant safe swap is you shield once and farm down. That's another reason why it might be a great idea for you to um, catch the move onto your own Toxapex because you can save a shield. You don't have to go down two shields that early on, but it's fine. And again, this is why we are running Psy Shock to be able to fight back once they come back in with the Toxapex. And because we put in so much work, we are able to get to yet another Psy Shock and we are pressuring shields from the tankiest Pokemon in the meta. You'd love to see it and they do let that go. And there, this is the Obama Snow variation. This is one that I've been seeing quite a bit of as well. Again, uh, you can see the original version with Tropius in the back. You can see it with a Gorgeist. You could also see it with a Shift Tree. This is the Obama Snow variation. And like I said, this team dominates all variations of team number one. And they quickly realize it was lights out. They do top left. Good game. Well played. Oh, this Charger Bug team just could not stop winning, guys. It was insane, especially when you keep encountering these Toxapex leads. Look, oh my goodness, it was a thing of beauty. So here they try to catch, and we intentionally throw this Crunch to chip the Trevenant, and now what we'll look to do is actually come in with our Toxapex and look to farm down. We're fully reading that there is a second Grass type in the back. We have seen this team a number of times by now, and it, it plays out the exact same way every time. Um, the Toxapex Trevenant Core just cannot beat this team. It is impossible. I woke up with a goal in mind. That was to create a Kryptonite team for the most powerful uh, core in this meta. And that's what we have achieved here, I should say. And we go for that sludge wave, and now we just trade uh, sludge waves on each other until one is gone. It looks like ours will be the one that goes down first because they are at a health advantage, but it doesn't matter. We're just going to look to chip as much as possible and maybe see if we can even grab a shield in the process, but I highly doubt it because Toxapex is the tank on this particular team. And now we can basically shield once and maybe farm down at this point. I'm reading that there's definitely a second grass type in the back. That's a good shield there. That was a big sludge wave. And there it is. So we, I think we've seen all variations thus far. Uh, this is the shift tree variation. And like I said, it does not matter what their second grass type is. When you run this team, you run right through it. And uh, that shift tree goes down quicker than you can blink your eyes. And they top left. Oh, I'm telling you, the wins were coming in so fast. Good game, well played. Oh, I thoroughly enjoyed this team for reasons like this, guys. We got a Charizard lead. Um, kind of tricky, 
I would say better a better lead than Talonflame, especially in its shadow form, because it's quite a bit squishier. Charizard's already squishy as it is. You tack on that shadow bonus, and it, it's even squishier. So you are almost guaranteed a shield. And we look to catch their move, undo our uh, Toxapex here. They were looking to bait us. That's fine. That works too. And now because we know that they were trying to bait... Uh, Shadow Charizard, the damage is just insane. We will shield, even though it is thoroughly resisted. You never know when that HP can come in handy. It won't quite come in handy in the mirror, especially when they have a little bit of a health advantage, but it's fine. We are just going to trade Sludge Waves back and forth until one is gone. And um, as per usual, ours will be the first one to go down, as they did come in with the health advantage, but that's fine. We drew out the hard counter to our Shadow Kanto Ninetales. That's what we wanted to do. Uh, because if you can get the Toxapex out onto the field and onto your Charger Bug, your Kanto Ninetales should do quite well um, up against what they have remaining. And um, this is a... <laughs> This is almost as bad as the Umbreon Mirror or the Mandibuzz Mirror or the Bastiodon Mirror. I don't know which one's worse, but uh, this one drags. Um, so we do aggressive swap back into our own Charger Bug just to try and get ahead on energy. We know that they have that Charizard remaining, and there they have a Trevenant. So I'm telling you guys, if, they've, if they have a Trevenant and a Toxapex on their team, they will not beat this team. I'm telling you. And this is, again, why we run Crunch. You definitely want Crunch on this specific team. And I would just say overall in general, I don't think x Scissor is the way to go. Um, they do take us out, and now it is just about nighty night sleep tight. We delete the Trevenant, and the Toxapex is hanging on by a thread. Just going to overload as much as we can here and look to CMP tie them here. Uh, they are tanky, but even resisted. This should just about KO. And we grab a shield. That is amazing. So now we can basically farm this thing down with our resisted embers and have loaded energy for that Charizard that is still lurking in the back. They aggressive swap back in, making it a lot easier for us. We do get to this weather ball. It is resisted, but it'll allow us to say bye-bye. And it is looking like lights out for them, I'm telling you. They have a Toxapex and a Trevenant on their team. Their chances are drastically reduced at winning against this one. Good game, well played. I think in terms of core breaking the meta, we struck gold with this one, my friends. But not with a lead like this. Speaking of core breakers, holy smokes, this thing core breaks the entire team. My goodness. The reason why is because they are triple resisting our fast move pressure, but good thing we're running crunch. Does, uh, does quite a bit of damage and has that 30% chance to lower their defense. So we have to stay right here, guys. This thing can um, hit both of our back two Pokemon for super effective damage. So we got to stay right here and just play out the zeros. I don't think we win. They just out-bulk us. It's just as simple as that. They out-bulk us and we are not getting these defense drops that we really need in this matchup here. So, yeah, we're going to play out the zeros, and if they take us out, which it's looking like they will, we're going to look to come in with our Ninetales and look to get rid of this thing just as fast as we possibly can. We come in with Ninetales because we can do neutral fast move pressure to this uh, Unova Stunfisk, whereas our Toxapex is doing resisted. So that's the play. That's the alignment. This thing is doing a number on us. Holy smokes. Uh, gonna look to throw this weather ball and get rid of this thing. And they shield. That means they're weak in the back. Gonna catch the move here. I'm not sure what they could have in the back. Could be a grass type. So if that is the case, it is a grass type. Not necessarily the one we want to see. Probably the worst grass type to see with this particular back line. But um, we'll take it. Gonna go for the sludge wave. The reason why is because with that rock typing, it, we can only do neutral damage to it with both of our two remaining Pokemon here. I'm um, gonna let this go and I believe put the hope and faith into our uh, K9 to um, hopefully sweep the remainder of this team here. They are dumping all of their energy. That is beautiful. That works out beautifully for us. We're gonna go for an aggressive farm down. We have to have loaded energy. We don't know what they have in the back and we absolutely have to shield up a stone edge. That would be lights out for us. And we do get the farm down. 
Now we'll have to see what they have lurking in the back here. They are thinking long and hard. Let's see it already. It's an Obama snow. This is looking like lights out. We just have to be careful of a potential catch because that Unova Stunfisk is still remaining on the team. We have to be careful. They tried to the catch there. Not falling for that. And we are going for this weather ball here. This will KO an entire generations of Obama snows. We say bye-bye to the Obama snow. And just like that, K9 has closed the game strong for us yet again. Good game, well played. I'm telling you guys, I would be lying if I said I did not have a very fun time with this team, but not with a lead like that. Gonna come in with our Toxapex and they meet us with a Bruxish. Holy smokes. This is the brand new Pokemon that has been recently introduced into Pokemon Go. We had a shift tree lead. We made a play into our Toxapex and we are counter swapped with a pretty hard counter. This thing runs confusion and of course we are a poison type, but we are tanky and they are not. So we are grabbing a shield with the sludge wave. You love to see it and they will farm down. I knew that this thing ran uh, Psychic Fangs. I wasn't sure what the second could be. I, I believe it can run Crunch as well. It doesn't matter. We're going to tank whatever it is. Uh, we just really want to get rid of this thing. And now, because they lowered our defense, these confusions are absolutely chunking. I don't anticipate they will burn their final shield, so we are just going to look to say bye-bye to the Bruxish. 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 Brux. Bruxish. Holy smokes. <laughs> we, uh, they come back in with the ship tree. That's a nightmare for our uh, charger bug. We come in with our K9, and they meet us with a wall rain. So this is looking pretty good. We are up a shield. And we will uh, look to overload as much as we can because once we take out this wall rain, we want to be as close to a weather ball as possible. Not messing around with this wall rain, um, not playing the guessing game. We are up a shield, going to expend the shields here. We're going to go for this weather ball. It doesn't KO, but that works to our advantage because we can now farm down. We are uh, achieving exactly what we wanted. This could absolutely be an EQ. It is. That is beautiful. We were going to shield either way and farm down, and they do have a move stored, but even in our shadow form, this is not an opposing shadow shift tree. We live it, and we get to the weather ball, and as we can see, our research tasks have been updated, which means that they top left the game uh, because it was lights out for that shift tree. Oh, man. Guys, I'm telling you, it's nice when a plan works to perfection. Good game well played to our opponent, and that is the team. And if you're wondering what that plan was, if you haven't figured it out by now, it was to introduce a team that can core break the very powerful and overutilized Trevenant Toxapex core. That was the goal. I think we achieved what we set out to, and that is core break that very powerful core. Uh, the most powerful core in the entire meta that is so hoping you guys have a charger bug lurking in your pokedex if you do it's worth building if you want to get ahead and get some nice juicy satisfying wins in the color cup this team was amazing but guys i had a blast i hope you all enjoyed as always i thank you for watching and keep up the grind thank you guys